National artist Carlos Botong Francisco is recognized for the genius of his iconic murals adorning important public buildings in the Philippines, including the Manila City Hall and the Philippine General Hospital. Fellow national artists Victoria Edades and Guillermo Tolentino noted how Botong's murals had the capacity to compress space and time in a coherent narrative that unfolded with truth, intensity, and grace. This 12-panel study in the Ayala Museum collection is one of the few remaining complete documentations of the design of the artist's earliest and largest major historical mural, 500 Years of Philippine History. The massive mural, 88 meters long and almost two and a half meters high, was commissioned as one of the attractions at the 1953 International Fair in Manila. The study, as with the final murals, was designed to form two extended segments. The first tackles our pre-colonial past up to the British invasion from 1762 to 1764. The second begins with the execution of the Filipino priests Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora, and ends with the image of then-current president Elpidio Quirino standing before the gates of the International Fair. Because of the nature of watercolor on paper and the lack of art conservation framing practices before the 1990s, the studies had faded and discolored over time. When these works were donated to the museum in 2004, the acidic mount and backing of the study was removed, and the panorama broken down into separate panels for individual acid-free mounting. Under the fair's theme of 500 years of Philippine progress, Botong's mural shows us that our history and identity as a nation was shaped not only by key personalities and landmark events, but through the participation of the public, men and women, in both significant events and evolving cultural practices and values. The first half of the mural is replete with cultural and religious beliefs that shaped our collective consciousness. We find the primordial Malakas at Maganda emerging from the split bamboo, the influx of foreign influences from the Chinese, Arabs, and Japanese, and even the fabled warrior Princess Orduha. After the arrival of Ferdinand Magellan in the 16th century, Christian symbols and practices proliferate throughout the panorama. The raising of a crucifix and toppling of an idol symbolizing conversion to Catholicism, the veneration of the Santo Niño, the expansion of Christianity through the efforts of Fray Ordineta, and even the practice of our faith in the Battle of La Naval where the Spaniards defeated the superior Dutch naval fleet through the intercession of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. The first segment ends with the British occupation of Intramuros and the revolt of the Ilocanos under Diego and Gabriela Silang. The second half of the composition has a decidedly secular tone, opening with the execution of the Gumburza, this gruesome image is followed by a rendering of the national hero José Rizal, surrounded by vignettes from his literary works. Notable, however, is the inclusion of the pilgrimages to Antipolo, in veneration of the Our Lady of Peace and Good Voyage. Even amid the writings of Rizal against the abuses of the Church, he too, in an earlier literary work entitled Junto al Pasig, acknowledged such religious observances that became part of Philippine life. The narrative then proceeds to the events of the Philippine Revolution led by Andres Bonifacio, the incarceration and execution of Rizal, and the arrival of the Americans. The arrival of Commodore George Dewey and his men in Manila Bay marked the end of the Spanish era in the Philippines. Emilio Aguinaldo and his men attempted to obtain international recognition of Philippine sovereignty, but were denied, resulting in continued fighting for Philippine independence until Aguinaldo's capture in 1901. Interestingly, 
the artist includes the portrait of Theodore Roosevelt rather than the President William McKinley, who was the President of the United States during the annexation of the Philippines. At the time, however, it was Roosevelt who had lobbied actively for the war between the U.S. and Spain and the eventual occupation of the Philippines as a strategic naval base in Asia. Opposite Roosevelt, we find the figure of Manuel L. Quezon, President of the Philippine Commonwealth Government. He is immediately followed by depiction of the invading Japanese forces in 1942. Here we find a decided shift in the stylistic rendition done by the artist. While in earlier vignettes, the artist showed his technical prowess as a draftsman by depicting the accurate likeness of known political and historical figures, the section in the Japanese period is blatantly caricature-like. General Tomoyuki Yamasta, framed in the red sun, is partially blocked by the exuberant Japanese soldier with arms raised to the heavens in the Japanese Banzai war cry. Surrounding the sun are ghoulish interpretations of conquest, war, famine, and death, the four horsemen of the apocalypse depicted in the Bible. Other vignettes of struggle are rendered semi-abstract and cartoon-like, perhaps to dull the pain from such recent events. Hope is restored with the return of MacArthur and the end of the Japanese era. In the final panel, independence is achieved, and the Philippine flag is hoisted by President Manuel A. Rojas. A woman with outstretched arms and identified by eminent art critic Alice Guillermo as an allegory for Inangbayan or the motherland, stands triumphant. She is surrounded by images of agriculture, engineering and infrastructure, broadcast media and education, all of which were highlights of the 1953 fair. The International Fair in Luneta was the first time the event was held in Asia. Crowds from across the globe were expected to come, and Batong's mural would have been the first site to greet them. Murals are created for an audience and are meant to be seen. Yet, as we examine the composition prepared by Batong, we may say that the artist did not design this work for the world, but for Filipinos. Who but a Filipino, informed by a knowledge of our mixed heritage of pre-colonial practices, 400 years of foreign rule by both Western and Eastern powers, and dreams for future independence could decode Batang's composition. Though it received international attention and merited a spread in Time and Newsweek magazines, 500 years of Philippine history was not designed for international scrutiny. It was a celebration of our history, identity, hopes, and achievements even as a young nation in the 1950s, and a call for Filipinos to recognize that rich heritage and hope for a brighter future.